Hey, uh, Mr. Parker here for week 15 of some updates and reviews. So let's hop right into this. The first one I'll be reviewing is from Synapse Films. This is The Creep Behind the Camera. It also included the original The Creeping Tear. Uh, the Creep Behind the Camera. Uh, this one actually follows the story of uh, infamous kind of uh, underground filmmaker A.J. Nelson, who was uh, you know, uh, busy during the 60s. Uh, he was a swindler, a con artist, and a sociopath. Uh, he basically manipulated his way into making this movie, and no one's really sure if he actually loved film or he was just doing it to try to make money or uh, just get power. Uh, this one is basically half uh, documentary, half interviews with uh, people that knew A.J. Nelson, his wife, uh, the producer of the movie, who was swindled and uh, recreations uh, of the actual situation here uh, what makes this movie so cool is the recreations are so fine to detail uh, the creeping terror was a 60s uh, crappy kind of TV movie that was just completely horrible because AJ Nelson didn't know what he was doing uh, and uh, this is the story behind it it's one of those movies where the story behind the movie is actually better than the movie uh, there's tons like that uh, like uh, the Zodiac Killer is one that was in the last week although the Zodiac Killer is much better than the creeping terror uh, so what we have here is all these uh recreations and uh they really stuck out because the acting's really well done uh it's darkly comedic it's done in a darkly comedic way but there is moments of drama that are really touching especially with lois who went through hell with this guy uh and the movie gets really dark but somehow it manages to keep its uh it's a kind of playful uh attitude it has music that fits like the time uh and uh fits the documentary like recreation things well and also the talking heads in here are actually there so they know aj nelson and they get in, per in depth uh, the funny thing is the sound was lost on the creeping terror so they basically dubbed everything over there's music there's a narrator it's a terrible movie and seeing these scenes recreated with AJ Nelson being such a serious nutcase uh, is uh, really interesting uh, AJ Nelson the guy who plays him Josh Phillips does a really great job I haven't hated somebody that bad in a very long time uh, the lady who plays his wife is also spectacular they'll cut in dramatic moments uh, with his wife in the movie and then they'll cut back to the interview with uh, AJ Nelson's real ex-wife and and uh, she just struggles sometimes to talk about it because it's, it brings up a lot of bad memories. And that, to be honest, was uh, really kind of, uh, sorry, my hair's all over the place, really kind of uh, hard to watch. I felt really bad for A.J. Nelson's wife in this movie. Uh, so they really do create some sympathy here. They show you what it was like to make a low-budget movie in the 60s. Uh, they show you, uh, you know, back in the day, you have a lot of these sociopaths and psychopaths that can just get anything done like H.H. H. Holmes or Bell Gunness because... People just tend to want to believe people more. Nowadays, uh, you can't trust anybody in the words of Stone Cold Steve Austin. But so that, that that's just uh, kind of what you have going here. But uh, they, the movie jumps around chronologically, chronologically, so that can be a little jarring at first. You'll think, well, I thought that Lois had, had left him, and it goes back, and she's there, and you're like, oh, the timeline on the bottom. It more follows the interviews they have and what they say, but uh, there's some really great moments. Uh, the actual Creeping Terror is done in 2K on here. They include the original movie, and it's kind of a must to see with the movie so you can see how much they went into detail at recreating the monster, recreating the set pieces, and how much A.J. Nelson was similar to the actual guy who played him. But uh, the guy who plays the producer, uh, Bill Thorby, is a is a shoehorn. for They, they look a shoe-in, I should say. They, they look perfectly the same. I mean, the, the guy who plays him and the actual real uh, producer. But uh, it's an interesting story, uh, done very well, has nice dolly shots. It's a, it's, a, it's a very professional movie with a lot of good acting, and uh, it's actually made like a film. It's not made like a, just a, a corny recreation movie you'd see on television about a murder back in 1964. Uh, also included is a, a commentary, a Q&A at Fantastic Fest, a, a 18 minute of the making of the creature, a 25 minute making of the movie. Uh, the director... Um, loves old B-movies and uh, it shows in the movie. He loves the history of film. He's a smart guy and uh, it comes through. Uh, I thought this one was pretty cool. Uh, worth your time and uh, Synapse did a good job with the release. Uh, it, it's worth the purchase if you like uh, especially 60s films or you're interested in The Creeping Terror. I don't think The Creeping Terror has ever had a good release anywhere else, especially on Blu-ray is more what I'm getting at. So check out the trailer. Savage, it's my screen name. Action Rebel, man of two faces. I, God, 
this guy who sold his mother into white slavery. Don't worry, Mom. As soon as I put this picture over, I'll buy you out. Mr. Nelson, I'm sure we can work something out. Barb and I got married in Mexico. You were syphilis. He was a real swindler, apparently. But from people I talked to, for all they know, he was sleeping in his car. Donuts. Buns. Tarts. Oh. <laughs> Did he think he was really making the best monster movie ever? We are going big time! Are we, are we still rolling? I guess I'll just stick to writing songs. Poems. found Jesus and you're making a monster movie called The Creeping Terror? Do I have to say it? You care about this guy anyway. The monster movie never lost money. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Look at Corman. That guy never lost a dime. Bugs and crabs, that's all he uses. The guy can take a traffic cone and give it teeth and make a mint. Think about what we can do with that thing. Not my song! I will kill you. Stop that! Well, they call that show business, but uh, not a business. Okay, so I'm just supposed to make something out of nothing, and then see if you like it, and then I get paid. Hooray for Hollywood. I am God. You must be dead, honey. After driving all night, what time is it? <sighs> Almost 4.30. Almost dawn. The next one here is The Black Room. This is from MVD. I believe this is a Capricorn uh, Films produced this one. Uh, this one has a, a fairly uh, decent cast in it. Uh, people will recognize Lynn Shade, Natasha Henstrigs, uh, James Duvall. Uh, so they all pop in here. Uh, yeah, this one uh, is basically your typical kind of haunted house movie by the storyline, but it's not typical at all it plays more like something we are still here meets the entity if that makes any sense to anybody uh this this newly uh wed couple or this newly this uh, new well i guess they're not new but this uh happy couple moves into this house and they instantly realize there's something wrong uh the husband gets possessed uh, from this incubus uh and he starts getting really sexual he starts to control things uh and uh this movie is gratuitous as all hell uh the sister comes in and things get even more complicated but but uh, what's, what's great about this movie is the script was written like 10 years ago, but the movie feels like it was made in the 70s or 80s. It doesn't feel like a nowadays movie where they, they typically kind of wink at the camera or super campy. The movie it doesn't, it just does what it does, and it does it does it a lot like an older film. It is campy, it is fun, uh, but it's not uh, something that's making fun of the genre or anything like that. Uh, the score, the music in here is all damn good. The special effects are mostly practical. Uh, there's some CGI help, which I have no problem with with some of it looks uh, uh not so great but most of it looks solid and the practical effects look really good there's some inventive kills in here which kind of surprised me and the, how far they go with uh the sexual stuff in here really surprised me and they have fun with the incubus kind of playing tricks on stuff on people like kind of like wishmaster where he'll put a girl's boobs on her back because she turned him down stuff like that it, it is fun it's weird it's gross it's gooey it's nasty like i said it feels like we are still here but more fun uh the, like the movie's called the black room because in the basement there's this room shut off and it's just uh, back like years ago in the 70s during a party they resurrected this uh incubus and uh he's stuck in this black room and of course he gets loose and that's pretty much the the entire plot of the movie uh shenanigans ensue and Nastasa Hentrick gets good in it the husband the guy who plays the husband's having a great time he gets to play kind of two characters one is the incubus and one is the kind of loving husband but uh I was happy with the movie uh, also uh Tiffany Shepis pops up in here it's a movie where it uses a lot of old kind of B actors not necessarily B actors like people that are famous for horror movies and stuff but they're they're not the kind of 
phone it in kind of actors and actresses. They do a good job and everybody's solid in here. The music's good. Uh, there's a commentary on here, which I like because you got to hear the director talk and he shows his love for the genre and uh, he's not one of those guys that sticks his nose up at the genre. You can tell he loves it and uh, he did a lot of homages to old ghost movies, but it's just a sleazy, slimy, good time. Uh, there's a premiere footage on here as well. I thought the movie looked good. I thought the acting was solid. I had fun with it. Was never bored. Uh, I give this one a recommendation. It's kind of a surprise, to be honest. We finally got our own home. I suppose you would get there. <laughs> What's down there? If I'm not mistaken, the basement. Huh? As it turns out, young Maggie Black had a dark secret. The woman that used to own our house. How do you know Margaret Black was into the occult? Ever since that party in her parents' basement, I believe it was in the early 70s. <laughs> What's an incubus? They're demons of lust and desire. They will try to seduce you. Trick you with pleasure. Make you want more. He's there. It feeds off human desires. But if you're not careful, it will literally eat you alive. You must be quiet. Where are you hiding? If you want somebody, you take me. The next one we have here is Charlotte. Uh, this is an anthology. I had not heard much about it. You really can't find anything about it on Internet Movie Database or anything. It's just a smorgasbord of shorts, some directed by the same people, I believe, some not. Uh, there's uh, one director I did, think did two or three, which those are probably the better shorts. Uh, what we have here is I guess they're all... Uh, the, the, the wraparound story is kind of crummy. Uh, this evil doll makes this girl watch the television. It's very simple, this, which means that these shorts probably were not made to go together, and it's just kind of a, you know, a tie around. Uh, some of the shorts... I thought were actually really great and a lot I thought were just eh I'm sure I forgot a couple the standout ones uh, in particular are the one where this guy is uh, being stalked by these two Girl Scouts who want him to buy these cookies and they come at all hours and he, he's kind of a, a douchey guy but he's really funny about it uh, and he starts to notice that the people who are eating these cookies are not right and uh, it becomes this weird showdown between him and two Girl Scout cookies really cute really funny uh, it's got a nice dark zany sense of humor another great one in here is about a little kid who sneaks into a movie theater where uh, everybody inside uh, the patrons are uh, monsters of sort. I don't want to spoil anything, but I probably already gave too much away. That one's really cute. Uh, there's a couple others here about an evil doll. It's standard. There's one about uh, twins and voodoo. Uh, the twist in that one's okay. The double twist is really stupid, but uh, that's just how I feel. Uh, there's some other ones in here where I have great setups, and they're they're all right. Uh, one with an evil uh, uh, closet troll or something. Uh, that one's kind of creepy. has its moments. Uh, they do a nice setup, and uh, it's fast and simple. And one where a uh, trick-or-treater leaves her purse, uh, not, and uh, the husband goes to look for it. And that one's setup is really terrifying, but uh, I'm not sure what the hell's going on by the end of it. It's just a strange, weird uh, smorgasbord of shorts. Some are great, some are bad. Maybe put it on during a Halloween party. Uh, it seems like mo some of them were trying to take place during a Halloween. Some haven't. I don't know. There's no real theme that correlates these. Maybe it's supposed to be a doll or some sort of doll, but I don't understand. It doesn't really work as an anthology, but there are a couple really good shorts on here. I did not notice any... Uh, uh, special features on the disc but uh that's charlotte uh so uh, if it interests you check it out
Congratulations! My name is Cindy. Would you like to buy a box of Adventure Girl cookies? They're delicious. I know. Your friend Mary was already here. And I told her the same thing I'm going to tell you. Ready? Not interested. So please, just go mug someone else. <laughs> You're funny. Mary said you had a good sense of humor. Oh, really? Did she put you up to this? Right, look, I told her I wasn't interested and I'm serious, all right? Don't give me that sad face shit. Uh, you just said a naughty word. Yeah, and you're gonna hear a lot more if you don't get the hell off my porch. Where are your parents, anyway? Okay, cute. Just have a nice day. The next one here is actually from Kino Lorber. I didn't get to watch the features, but I wanted to talk about this one. This is Miracle Mile. And I originally had heard about this. I saw the cover and I was like, I don't know what that is uh, during a keynote sale at one point. But Brian Schauer, Sauer and uh, Elric Kane were, were pumping this one in Pure Cinema Podcast, so I had to check it out. Uh, yeah, and I am so glad I did. I picked this up at the uh, keynote sale. Uh, it has Anthony Edwards in it, a slew of people off the top of my head. John Agar, uh, Brian Thompson, who else is in it? Oh, the mother from Pet Cemetery. I can't think of the main actress's name. She looks very familiar, but I, I, I haven't seen that many movies with her in it. But there's a lot of people people in this one uh kurt fuller uh the uh geez what is that guys uh the detective from bride of reanimator uh the psychiatrist and terminator it's got so many familiar faces uh the movie opens up as this kind of a love story is made in 88 um uh, and you're thinking, I, I I went in blind. I suggest you do the same. The trailer will probably ruin it, so be careful. But uh, I went in kind of thinking, this is going to be your typical love story. Uh, had narration in there. Uh, and I was like, okay, this this might be cool. As Tangerine Dream Score might be a heartbreaking uh, kind of love story. But what happens is uh, about 20 minutes into the movie, there's a phone call. He misses a date with a girl, and he panics and goes to the diner, and he gets a phone call he's not supposed to get. That opens the door from that, and the movie's pretty much uh, is in real time after that. It's uh, really uh, suspenseful. Uh, I never... Uh, Got, I, I actually, it's one of the last movies I saw where I said, man, I really don't know what's going to happen and I really have to see what is going to happen. Uh, there's great moments of dramatic turns in here. Uh, the acting's top notch. Even the side characters in here are beautiful. Uh, they're the type of characters that when they're out of the picture, you're wondering where they went. You're wondering what they're doing. And to me, that is, uh, and this kind of, uh, it feels like a straight nightmare movie. Uh, something that you would have where they were there and they were there, but you don't know what happens to them and nothing actually makes sense, but it seems realistic all at the same time. Uh, Miracle Mile is a masterpiece to me. I, I love the hell out of it. Uh, the ending is brilliant. Uh, it's a great love story, but it's also an amazing, entertaining uh, movie that I don't want to spoil anything. Just go in blind. Trust me. It's a, it's a great movie. Super well made. Really great score. Uh, emotional, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I thought about it for days afterwards. Love can sure spin your head around. God, where do you begin? Well, hello. We must have been meant to be together. It's too bad you have to work tonight. Only till midnight. Fate is a funny thing. Take a nap, because you're going to need all your energy tonight. It was one of those strange nights Finally meet the right girl and you blow it. That could ruin your whole day. In a big way. Dad, it's happening. This is it. This is really it. This is the big one. This is a joke, right? It's really happening. 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 This can't be true. We'll all be dead if we don't get out of here. Nobody believes this, do they? Not me. Not Spongy. Make a list for me. People who we want to bring along. We got to get Julie. Who's Julie? Harry Belafonte. Who are you? Who are you? Stop and let me off. I don't stop for nothing. Jump! <laughs> don't hurt me, man. I, mean, I got Nakamichi Pioneer. I got everything. If it doesn't happen, I'll tell you. If what doesn't happen, man? I'm dreaming. That's, that's it. I'm dreaming. Y'all ready to go? You the pilot? Hey! Hey, do you know anybody who can fly helicopter? Helicopter pilot. All the helicopter pilot bars are closed. What's the problem? It's true. Love can be exciting. Trust me with this. Even terrifying. Julie! Video! I love you! 
love you. But nothing could prepare you for an experience like this. What is the truth, Harry? Miracle Mile. Listen, I'm just a guy who, who picked up the phone. The next one is also a Kino. This is Certain Fury. Yeah, uh, I, I think I picked this one up. On, it always, the, the the cover art when I saw it, I was like, I have to see that. But uh, I think Pure Cinema Podcast or maybe one of the other podcasts I listen to pushed me over to Edge. This one is bizarre. It has uh, two actresses that are Academy Award winning nominees or actually winners. Uh, they're these young girls that have gotten in trouble. One is kind of a street smart uh, bad girl. One's a good girl that, uh, you know, uh, is acting out because her mother died. And, and during uh, their sentencing in court, what happens is uh, a couple of the other girls in there uh, run ballistic and they have a giant shootout with the cops. It's horrifically violent and over the top, kind of surprising. Uh, basically, they and they escape together. Uh, the cops think they they were involved, so they're on the run and they sh have this shaky relationship. This is by far one of the sleaziest movies I've ever seen. They run into pimps and drug dealers and whatnot, uh, and there's some cringeworthy moments in here. But it all has that tune of that '80s kind of triumphant, uh, you know, zany tag team of people that don't really belong together. And uh, at points. The, the score comes in and you're like yeah like I'm gonna climb the highest mountain that's not the extra song but that's just what it reminds me of at times especially in the scene where one of the girls helps the other girl after having a lot of fights and turmoil that picks him up during a fire and this music comes in it gets all emotional but then on the, the other hand it just is a super sleazy dark kind of gross movie but uh, it, it's just all over the place and it has to be seen to be believed uh, it's gory it's weird I don't know what the hell is going on it's like it's like this uh, is like like one of these weird places, uh, like a Death Wish movie or something where everybody's just out to get you. You can't trust anybody. I think somebody said, I think I heard somebody say it's like the town from Hobo with a Shotgun. And I wouldn't disagree with that. That also feels like a Death Wish town. Maybe that's what they said. But regardless, it's a sleazy town where somebody who may have wrote this is super paranoid that everybody's out to get them. But uh, there's there's uh, also uh, Peter Fonda's in it. He plays a sleazeball crime boss. Uh, really cool movie in a lot of ways. Not as good as Miracle Mile. It's a sleazy kind of trash-tastic stuff you might see on TV when you're a kid or HBO for sure. Uh, I guess it's kind of a lost movie, so uh, that's Certain Fury. I checked that one out as well. Academy Award winner Tatum O'Neill. I know we can beat them. Academy Award winner Irene Cara. I didn't resist arrest. And Peter Fonda. Would you help me if I had stiffed a cop? I didn't stiff a cop! They never met before today. Nobody move! And they don't belong together now. They're about to be tried in a crossfire. Convicted by circumstance. And framed for a crime they didn't commit. Please! They're caught up in certain fury. White, black. They'll grab us in two seconds. Now they're bound together by chance. I just want a place where I can figure a way out of this mess. I want you away from me. Now! And if they can't make it together... Don't let anybody in, Lee. Then they won't make it at all. Go back home to your boyfriend's porch. I don't really live like that. You sure don't live like this. The only thing that will save them now is their nerve, their luck, and each other. Okay. They may not survive. And we know you're in there. But they're not going down without a fight. If you're gonna do it, do it. Now I'm giving myself up. Now. If you take one step that way, I'll kill you. They're about to find out that when you're desperate, You'll do anything and everything to stay alive. Hold it! My buddies would have done it already. They're gunning for you. Tatum O'Neill, Irene Cara, Certain Fury.
And uh, the last one I have here is uh, Death Sentence. I have seen this one before. Uh, this is actually uh, by the it's based on a book by the same author of Death Wish. Uh, this is by James Wan. I think this was his second or third movie, maybe his third after uh, Dead Silence. Uh, and this one didn't do well. It was made in 2007. And I got to say, this is one of the most underrated movies I've seen, especially for that time. Uh, it, it's a story about revenge. It's a story about, you know, uh, true revenge. You know, you don't get what you want. Uh, you sacrifice a lot to get that that it, it, it that that revenge and that justice I guess that you see fit it basically follows the story of Kevin Bacon who's a son he's he's going to be you know he's a hockey player he's getting a scholarship uh, he's uh, killed in a gang initiation kill by these scuzzy people straight out of 2007 bad guys like uh, junkie guys with the tattoos and the mohawks and those that, that kind of type definitely dated bad guys but they're vicious and uh, you hate them but they have a bond among themselves as well uh, Kevin Bacon uh, realizes during a, a great courtroom scene where the, his lawyer spits and says hey, we'll get five years for this kid that you know that's not enough and uh, his son lost his life, and he decides to take justice in his own hands while trying to, you know, hold uh, his wife uh, and juggle his wife and his, his work and his life and his other son. And, of course, uh, it doesn't really end well. You guys know how Death Wish is, but uh, this is kind of the more realistic, tragic version of Death Wish, uh, where a regular man takes the law into his own hands and it ends in tragic uh, way. Uh, but I, what I love about this movie is it's brutal. Uh, a lot of people complain that the movie was brutal, uh, but then it also showed that, uh, you know, revenge is not the right answer or violence is not the right answer. There's going to be consequences. But the, I, I see it as if you're going to have this cathartic violence against these bad guys, it's got to at least feel like you're like an amazing experience. Of, uh, well, bigger than life. But then after the adrenaline wears off and you realize what you've done and everything that hits the fan and what you've lost because of it, that's when it hits home and you realize. Unfortunately, you know, some people probably see that, you know, big action rush and they think, well, yeah, that's like people that watch American History X and think it's a, you know, uh, uh, pro-racism movie or something like that. But uh, you, you can't worry about dumb people when you make a great movie. But uh, Death Sentence, Kevin Bacon is the father. He's great in it. There's a score or a motif in this one that comes on, and uh, it cuts right to my soul. Uh, I feel that the movie portrays loss fairly well, and you know how you're lost, and you're like a skeleton. But Kevin Bacon has that unique look where when he's dressed up and looks regular, he always has something a little off about him. He looks okay, but when he has to look off, when he has to look bad, when he has to look like he's been through hell, just make Kevin Bacon pale, and he just looks terrible at the end of this movie. Uh, it's also due to how good of an actor he is. Also, John Goodman appears in the movie, always great, plays a sleazy crime boss, a gun guy, and his exchange with Kevin Bacon is brilliant. Like I said, the violence in this movie is over the top but it's the way I like revenge you know uh, like the revenant or even uh, they, you get hints of it at Death Wish 5 in the beginning he's haunted by what he's done I love the Death Wish movies but but you know I like the for revenge, you gotta lose something. You gotta lose a piece of yourself. You gotta lose something else. In this movie, both sides, everybody's telling them, give it up. It's over. From the gang, after the initial attack on the gang, they re decide to retaliate, and everybody's telling them, don't go any further. End this. But, uh, you know, that, uh, um, uh, I guess a man's ego and his, his lust for revenge cannot be uh, satisfied by just that, by people telling him that. But a uh, really great movie, underrated. Uh, I watched it on Vudu this time. I had seen the DVD. I'm not sure if the Vudu's unrated, but uh, regardless, it's a horrifically violent movie with lots of really good action, and I just love the hell out of it, to be honest. Okay, guys. Brandon Hume, you've just hey. won MVP. God. Number one, number one, number one. Nick? Hey, honey. I just wanted to let you know that our son is going to Canada to play hockey. I love you, and we'll be home soon. Hey, where do you think you're going? I need something to drink, Dad. OK, well, quick in and out, because we got to get home. All right. Get down! You can do this. Number five. Put that animal in jail. I want this guy to go away for the rest of his life. I've got one eyewitness, you. We've just got your word. I'm dismissing this case. Mr. Darley, you are released from custody.
you kidding me? Your brother, dude, he's dead. I say who lives, I say who dies. I'm coming for the rest of your family. You just bought them a death sentence. I really don't care what happens to me. I just need them to be safe. How do I make it stop? He started a war. God help you. I need guns. You got three ground. Uh, that's actually the movies I had to review today. Uh, let's get into the old contest for Darkman and Screwballs. Uh, again, I want to mention, uh, that, uh, winner of the last contest, the Monster Squad, Night of the Creeps, and, uh, Night of the Demons 2, uh, send me your information. I, I haven't had, uh, got it. So, here we go. This is for, uh, Screwballs and Darkman. This is Katie. That's all they left. So, Katie, uh... Ugh, can't my face focuses on there katie send me a message you won uh screwballs and dark man on blu-ray all right for the new competition here we go you got to do three things you got to like the screaming toilet facebook page all that information is below also to mention there is a written review of creep behind the camera at the screaming toilet page you got to go and you got to subscribe to my youtube channel uh mr parka and you also got to leave a comment at the Screaming Toilet page where the uh, Creep Behind the Camera uh, written review is hosted at. Leave a comment says you want to be in, uh, entered in. And you have a chance to win uh, Bloody Birthday on Severance, still sealed, on DVD. Uh, Bride, a reanimator from Alliance. I don't believe it's on cut on DVD. That's a Canadian release. And The Psychic Killer, which has been released on Blu-ray uh, from uh, Vinegar Syndrome. You got a chance to win all three of those. Psychic Killer is also sealed. Uh, and remember... Uh, if you want to ask me a question, which is the next segment, uh, go right ahead. Go right to the Screaming Toilet uh, page where you enter your competition, enter your name, and then ask a question right below, and I will answer it in this show, which is the segment I'm going into right now. All right. We have a few questions here. Christopher Dallier, my favorite trauma movie. And, you know, I'm not going to give you some uh, big movie where, uh, like it, again, like I said, my shot, favorite shot of video movies were pretty obvious. Uh, my favorite trauma movie is The Class of Newcomb High. I love the hell out of that. I love the gang in it. I love the gore in it. I love the music in it. Everything about that movie I love. I saw it at a young age. I also love The Toxic Avenger. And uh, stuff they distributed, I love Redneck Zombies. And uh, Combat Shock as well. But I'll go with The Class of Newcomb High because I feel that is a real trauma movie. And then The Toxic Avenger. Tim Evans, other than collecting movies, what else do you love to do in your spare time, my friend? Uh, I like to go to work and make money, and uh, I'm just kidding. That's uh, probably all I do about this point. I like to act in movies. Uh, I try to make movies in my spare time. I haven't been doing that as much lately, but I have been acting. Love to act, love to help on uh, independent movies. I like to work out and exercise, and I love to eat. Uh, I like to run as well. I eat a lot. I like, uh, you know, keeping up a little bit with MMA, not fi not just watching it and stuff like that. So those are probably pretty much all the things I do. Uh, Matt Go Godfrey, uh, I know you mentioned Oliver Reed in The Pit and Pendulum, and you have talked about how amazing he is in The Devils, which I completely agree. What other Oliver Reed movies would you recommend to watch other than Tommy? Uh, Oliver Reed movies to watch. The Brood. He's great in The Brood, uh, the uh, David Cronenberg movie. I think he does a really amazing performance in that. Uh, he plays that uh, this doctor, and he's really like intense, as always. Uh, Adventures of Baron Munchausen. He plays this, uh, uh, the god. Who's the god who makes the weapons? But he's really crazy. We go bombs. And he's just nuts, and he's jumping up and down. He's like troll-like. Great in that movie. And then some fun ones like Severed Ties and Spasms. They're okay. He doesn't do an amazing job in those, but he does solid. And The Hunting Party, his accent's a little off, but his performance is really intense. Love that one. Uh, but one that I would really, I'm thinking of another one. I had one at the tip of my tongue that I just, oh, Venom is really great because he gets to act opposite of Klaus Kinski, and they're just two intense people that are batshit crazy, and you know it. Uh, just ready to snap. But, uh, you know, I've always enjoyed the hell out of Oliver Reed in movies. I'm sure there's a bunch I'm just missing off 
the top of my head. But uh, yeah, he's always good, and I love the hell out of him in movies. Gladiator's another great performance. You can't go wrong with Gladiator. His last performance, he has uh, some great memorable lines in that as well. Uh, he does pop up with some weird stuff as well, like Ator. Is that no, not Ator? Uh, Gore, which is a really weird movie. Uh, but yeah, Oliver Reed's the man. I just realized I forgot to do my shout out. I guess the shout out's coming a little late this time. I'm going to give it to Just the Disc podcast with Brian Sauer. He basically talks about, you know, upcoming disc or what he's picked up lately. He'll do Kino, Shout Factory, Arrow, uh, or he'll do a random one. I'm giving him the shout out because it's a great show. He does also Pure Cinema podcast. He was formerly a Screamcast. Uh, he's a super nice guy. Sounds like a super nice guy and uh, is always really polite and uh, well informed. Uh, and he also recommended Miracle Mile, which I love. So uh, thanks, Brian Sauer. Thanks, Just to this podcast check it out all the information below let's get into the update why am i looking at that camera screw that camera let's get into the update all right we'll start off with the dvd uh the evil that men do with charles bronson i was trying to only collect the bronson on blu-ray but that's not on blu-ray i haven't seen it I hear it's, it comes highly recommended. I was in, a, what is it, the Grindhouse Cinematic Group, and I said, what's your favorite Charles Bronson movie? And a lot of people picked that one. That was one of the ones I didn't have. Uh, Walter Hill's The Warriors. I, I put off buying this because people were like, screw the director's cut, but you know what? I don't really care anymore. I just wanted it. I haven't seen it in a long time. Walter Hill's one of the best. Pick these up dirt cheap. Tie that binds. It was like three bucks. Yeah. Couldn't pass it up. Innocent Man. I saw this when I was a kid. Like Tom Selleck. Uh, again, three, four bucks. And Terminal Velocity, again, saw this as a kid, have not watched since, Charlie Sheen. Uh, Armed and Dangerous with John Candy, I didn't know this was on Blu-ray, I love this movie, this is a comedy action movie, uh, Eugene Levy and uh, John Candy together, uh, they're like, uh, work for this uh, security guards and the union's crooked and uh, Robert Leoja runs it, I believe, or he gets killed, I can't remember what his part is, but the two goons in the movie are Jonathan Banks and uh, Brian James, which are both really good character actors and really bad, great faces for bad guys, uh, Tom Lister pops up in here, Meg Ryan's in it, uh, um, Thomas Nicholas Worth pops up in here as a transvestite, which I love. Just a, a zany Steve Riles back as a crazy trucker. I believe it's Steve Riles back, but just a really fun movie with a great cast. One of my favorite John Candy performances. And I didn't know it was on Blu-ray. I saw it on Blu-ray. I was like, I need this now. It wasn't very expensive either. We have three Code Reds: The Power, which I have not seen. Vengeance by Antonio Marinetti, which I have not seen. I just bought the DVD. The Slasher. I have not seen this. I believe it's an Italian movie, so uh, maybe a Jello. It looks like a Jello, but uh, any Italian movie I get on Blu-ray. Hunter Rifles with Jim Brown, Raquel Welch. Is it Raquel? Yep. And Burt Reynolds from Kino. I love Burt Reynolds. Uh, Dillinger. I didn't have this Arrow release. Uh, Warren Oates is John Dillinger. Why didn't I have this? Why didn't I see this? That's terrible. I feel ashamed. I think my dad mentioned it years ago. Uh, we have the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-rays, uh, Throat, 12 Years After, uh, documentary about Deep Throat, Red Roses of Passion, and Snapshot, aka The Day After Halloween, I believe. Is it? Yeah. We have that. Pretty cool. Nice, tough slipcover. Yeah, but, oh, have you guys seen the frickin' Vinegar Syndrome's October, uh, slate? Amazing. Demon Wind? Bloodbeat? Come on, Demon Wind. There's other ones in there too, Lurkers and Prime Evil. But I'm excited about Demon Wind. I love Demon Wind. It's one of the. I mean, I haven't I haven't seen it in years. It's one of those ones I've seen a couple times, but I've I've put on it and just watch parts of it just because it's so crazy and ridiculous. You know, Demon movies. I'm not talking about possession movies, but Demon movies. Stuff like Demons, Demons Two, Night of the Demons, Demon Night, Demon Wind. Underrated genre. One of the best. So I know I was a little mixed up on doing what I normally do in this one. Got some of it mixed up, but I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate the questions. And remember, uh, you can always ask a question in the Q&A, and I will answer it, whatever it is. I don't really care. If it's too bad, I just won't answer it. But I probably will anyways. Eh? But uh, thanks again for watching, as always, and uh, have a good one.